if there's anything about the helium community, it's that we like to argue with each other. Everyone has different opinions as to what is better or what is worse. And the thing is, we all base it around the same philosophy. So what am I talking about? We're going to talk about antenna gain, right? So I get questions all the time about antennas. Is this better? Is this worse? We're going to settle this once and for all. We're going to just lay down the facts. People send me comments or, or questions saying, how is this antenna making more than mine? It's a lower DBI. Or they tell me I should have used an 8 DBI antenna versus a 5.8 DBI antenna. Were they right? So I went ahead and tested this out and I went ahead and took someone's advice. So what we're seeing here is literally a side-by-side -side comparison. This is real time. Um, and these are two antennas that I have. Now, literally, these are right next to each other. So for example, this right here is going to be the 5.8 dBi antenna. And this is a 8 dBi antenna. I own both of these. These are both mine. And they are right next to each other. If you notice on the other side of the screen over here, the antenna is right here. And then right here is where this other antenna is. So you're literally looking at a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the exact same image. So if you look at these hexes right here, they are identical, right? And these numbers keep changing, guys. So, so far, my 5.8 dBi antenna is making more than my 8 dBi antenna. But just barely. So, it's like 28 cents less. But this does not always stay the same. Sometimes my 8 dBi antenna will be making more than my uh, 5.8 dBi antenna. The 5.8 dBi antenna, you guys have seen this install. It's the install that I recently did. It's the fastest install that I have done to date. It took me less than two hours to do because of the entire Universal Setup video that we have in this channel. So, if you haven't already seen that Universal Setup, I will posted right here for you and makes our setup super simple super clean now going back to these results let's go back seven days on each time frame my 5.8 dbi antenna has been making more than the 8 dbi antenna so what you guys were just watching was yesterday's this is today's this is about 20 hours later from this recording now this hotspot has been online since 11 days ago so it's really difficult to make a 30-day comparison guys what we can do is this let's look at the 24 hours and I did mention that my 5.8 dBi antenna is making more than my 8 dBi antenna. Granted, who wins and when it comes to witnesses already, just so, just right now, uh, it's going to be the 8 dBi. Now, this gets a little complicated. Why am I making more with a 5.8 dBi than I am making more with an 8 dBi? So, honestly, I couldn't tell you. Like, I couldn't tell you an exact answer, but here are my thoughts. I'm thinking that many people use an 8 dBi antenna. Uh, so, the people that use an 8 dBi antenna, you could probably go further, right? That's, that's true. Um, and these antennas hit other hotspots that are already being hit. This might not make a lot of sense, and I'm probably not the best at explaining this, but just bear with me. The 5.8 dB antenna is not so commonly used because everyone buys uh, 8 dBIs, right? Everyone goes for the higher dBI. I think that my 5.8 dB antenna are hitting other hotspots that are not being pinged or witnessed so much. And for example, if you have one hotspot that's getting witnessed by five other hotspots, then that starts to lose its value. But if you have one hotspot, that has only one witness, then the value of that witness is a little bit more valuable. Now, this is not to an exact science, but the numbers don't lie right here. And I'm thinking that the 5.8 dB antenna goes over certain, certain objects, certain obstacles that allow me to hit other hotspots that are not being hit by other hotspots. You know, does that make sense? Now, how much have I been making with this hotspot? So on March 6th, something happened to the network. I don't know what it was, but it was after the whole like debacle of of the whole hit 55 thing. But before then, I was in the high 0.6s. I was hitting 0.7s sometimes. Um, but after that, it was never the same. So my hotspot never financially recovered from this. But with a 5.8 dB antenna, I was making 0.6s. So that goes, that's a lot. That's six times over the average. So again, I can't say exactly why I'm making more with a 5.8 dBi, but when it comes to witnesses, if you're in a crowded area, yes, the higher dbi is probably going to outperform the 5.8 dbi it just depends on what you need for example this right here is a clip of the horizon for the 8 dbi antenna there's nothing in my way for the 5.8 dbi antenna i do have a little bit of a obstruction it's in the exact same neighborhood it's just i'm a little bit lower because i'm on a one-story house versus a two-story house so you can guys can you guys can imagine that i just have a little bit of that uh, of that obstacle in my way so therefore i have a little bit less witnesses so how can a 1.2 dbi antenna make more than a higher dbi antenna for example like an 8 dbi well that's because a 1.2 dbi antenna is better performing in a crowded area where there's 
a lot of obstacles building houses you maybe you're on a lower level or maybe you're just in the inner city where there's a lot of buildings or bridges around you that infrastructure of the city blocks your signal so you have to go way higher you got to go over it so 1.2 dbi antenna would outperform an 8 dbi antenna because an 8 dbi antenna would just hit those and then your 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 signal would just get completely blocked and destroyed realistically i've only made ten dollars more in seven days with one antenna so is that a big difference well if you think about it that's about forty dollars more a month that i'm making with a 5.8 than i am with a dbi now if you're wondering how close are these hotspots i mean they are super close i actually got really lucky and i was able to just uh, put my antenna my hotspot right here uh, because i was literally in between so i went ahead and just moved it over a couple meters and uh, really just be in my own hex the reason that's important guys is to show you that there's really not that much of a difference between these antennas let's go over the differences between the setup both of them outdoor enclosures you guys know how it goes three feet of lmr 400 for me mounted on top of the roof now the differences for the 5.8 dbi antenna it's actually on a one-story house and yet it's outperforming the one that's on a two-story house the 8 dbi antenna is about 10 feet higher than the one-story house and both of my setups are being ran with power over ethernet before we close out this map here guys it is important to know that i cannot go to the 14 day because this one has not been online for a total of 14 days hence the dramatic increase in performance here but if we look at the network average we are in like the 0.09s and almost a 0.1 sometimes so with just these setups right here we are four times over the network average now the three most important things about helium mining are location 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 then after that i would suggest picking the right antenna and elevation those two go hand in hand and uh, i recommend not avoiding the elevation part now helium mining is starting to die off in profitability so is it still worth it to get these antennas this is uh not financial advice by any means you guys know that i think it's crazy how many people start to bash on the project just because the entire market is going down and they're complaining that the earnings are dropping blah 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 and yeah it's true the earnings are dropping not just in the price but also in the total h t that you're earning but should price start to rise then it'll still be worth it so is it worth it i think so because i myself have a brand new miner i'm not going to show too much because uh, that is for another video but i'm actually super excited it just came in like a couple hours ago and I'm now going to be buying me another antenna because I think that it's definitely worth it, especially if you plan out your location correctly. Um, you know, all jokes aside, me as, as, as taking this seriously as a business for me, the amount of money I put down is nothing to play around with. This is real money that I earned and it'd be r stupid of me to just waste money. And so for me, it's not dumb. I think that buying an antenna is very important. Now, guys, before you just go off and buy an antenna, let me just make some things kind of clear here, okay? The 5.8 dBi antenna, I get the large profile one because it's just bigger, right? I feel like it probably works bigger than a shorter antenna. Have I tested it? No, but I want to get that range. I want to get that height. Now, again, I prefer that I go to Rockland. There's a couple reasons why. Now, it's a little bit more expensive at Rockland than, for example, say you go to Rack Wireless. If you just get this uh, 5.8 dBi antenna and, hey, $40, right? That's cool. So check this out when you add it to the cart and you haven't even bought your cables yet when you add it to the cart and you hit checkout there's only one shipping method and it's 33 dollars for one antenna so total it's 73 dollars that right there this is like almost a whole nother antenna basically it gets worse let's just say that you have five miners and you decide to get five cables i wouldn't get this length so whatever i'm trying to make this as practical and as cheap for everyone uh let's say you have five miners and five cables you go ahead and check out you're gonna pay it 150 dollars worth of shipping <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now, with that out of the way, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for those who already use the links, but I do have links down below. It helps me a ton. It helps me make more and more of these videos. So, appreciation sincerely goes out to everyone, guys. Now, with that being said, Rockland, look, free shipping. Get it fast. So, I have ordered from Rock Wireless, and it has taken me, like, literally two weeks, okay? I ordered from Rockland, and they're faster. They're based out of Florida. But when you go to check out, there are options for you to choose from your shipping. So if you want it the next day, yeah, you can pay the 50 bucks. That is the same as as, as a Rack Wireless for waiting for about two weeks. Now, if you have gotten something from Rack Wireless in less than a week or two, drop a comment down below. Let me know how that went out for you. For the most part, uh, all of my orders have taken two weeks to get there. And look, you can even buy some miners here. They sell them for 700. It's a little bit pricey, but hey, that's the price that it takes to get a miner fast. And if you can replicate what I'm doing here with one of my miners, it's making $365 in a month. You'll be able to make that money back in about two months. Now, if guys, I put a lot of effort into getting a location like this, so it's not as easy as it sounds. I know, don't bash me, guys. I know, I know. <laughs> but if you really do plan, guys, I'm telling you, if you plan out really hard and you don't settle, you don't settle for the first person that agrees to host your miner, 
you can get a really good spot. Now the 5.8 large profile is uh, slightly bigger than the low profile one. It basically matches the rack wireless antenna. They're the exact same height, 32 inches. You don't have to get the large profile. It is slightly more expensive. Now, if you don't want to get the large profile 5.8, you can just get the 60 BI antenna. It's going to be slightly smaller. And uh, there's really not that big of a difference. It's like $10 difference and just a little bit of size difference, of course. And if you're looking for the 8 DBI, then that's right here as well. Uh, $64 for that. So you might have to weigh your ops to see which one's cheaper. But as far as if you have like maybe one or two miners, this might be the way to go. If you have a whole bunch of miners and you don't care waiting for a long time, then or and paying a ridiculous amount of shipping, then you can go ahead and go with rack wireless. Now say that the budget comes out to be somewhat similar or maybe you're indifferent. I don't know. What I like about this is that you're not cornered to pick um, one cable size or three cable sizes. I mean, uh, rack wireless only has like so many cables, you know, not to bash on rack wireless, but they only have three lengths, three meters, or 10 feet, 16 feet, and 30 feet. And I mean, what if you want something smaller than that? So then you kind of just corner to go into Rock, uh, to Rockland when you can pick out what kind of cable you want. And they have a plethora of cables. You know, you got the three feet, the six feet, the 10 feet cables, 15, 16, 20 feet, and so on, so on, so on. I mean, you can just go as long as you want. And they got RFC 400 and RFC 600 as well. So now let's talk a little bit about the antenna gain. So I don't want you guys to get all fixed up on these images. This is a really popular image that everyone uses to reference. But look, it's not to the T, okay? Long story short, what you need to remember is that the higher the antenna, 8, 9, 10, 11, the higher the antenna gain, it is going to be more focused on the horizon, okay? And if it's going to be a lower, then it's less focused on a horizon and more focused on going up over objects. And please, guys, if you're still watching, please, I hope that you guys don't go on Amazon and buy one of these. I'll post a video right here somewhere atop and... Uh, I have basically just gone over this antenna that we had. Long story short, it worked out horribly and I would never, I would never recommend this antenna. Now, if you guys want to see how I look for locations or how I uh, test out to see if your location is a good location, or maybe to see what antenna you would need because it's kind of uh, out of your line of sight, like physically, the, what you can see from your eyes. Maybe you're standing on top of a roof and you're like, oh, it looks great because you can see all over. Uh, Maybe you're standing on top of a roof and you're like, oh, it looks great. I can see over all the houses. That might be great and all, but what if the elevation in your area starts to change on you? Okay, so for example, let's just say that, you know, for example, this is Houston, right? This is Ace Town. But uh, you're, you're right here and your house is right here. Got some good drawing skills, right? And you're like, hey, I can see over all the houses, right? But what happens is that the elevation starts to change. You guys see that? And... Call me crazy and this might sound dramatic, but watch. I'm about to show you what the map looks like and you'll be like, wow, that's that's a huge elevation. And so even though you can see all the houses, your elevation starts to interfere and therefore you're only able to reach uh, to these houses here. Now I'm enough with this horrible drawing. Now this is where my antenna is more or less in this direction. And if we put this antenna over here, you can see that I am, what, this is 49 meters and this is 56 meters. So meters go a long way. Okay, that's 10 meters. That's over 30 feet of elevation difference. Now I have another antenna over here. And again, I'm 62 meters and then this one is 49 meters. So the difference in the elevation is pretty big, guys. You can kind of tell. And as I start to branch out this way, again, I'm here at 62 and this is 45 meters. So that is another 15 feet of elevation that we have. Well, if I'm looking down into Houston, check out the huge elevation difference. Look at that, 62 meters and then 22 meters. That's 40 meters of difference in elevation. So that's a really good area to be in. So this is a great tool to have, a great tool to use when you're planning out your mining. So now you've seen my results with these antennas. Let me know down below in the comment section what your guys' results are. I'd love to hear from you. And if you guys don't want to do that, you can hop in our Discord. I will put the link down below so you guys can hop in and start chatting with us. We have a, a small people there. If you guys want to brainstorm together, that'd be super cool. So I will see you guys in there. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Gary Chaparro. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.